Football franchise, talking about that guy. Who? E. Tyler every week. Heavy analytics, competition real steep. Whoa, that's sweet. Ho in this belief. Nick so sick, man, bringing ships the whole fleet. Goats, not sheep. Follow every tweet. Don't sleep, always find a sleepers on the street, boy. F3, F3. Winning every single league. Money back guarantee, but it's free. Welcome to the franchise. Three podcasts, everybody. My name is Sean. I'm here with my co-host Andrew. What's up? And Joey. What's up? How you guys been? Good. How about yourself? How's the bunnies? <laughs> the bunnies <laughs> all made it. We found the final one a week after uh, we took them in, and so they're all off at the wildlife rehab center now, just living their best life. I'm sure. Did you? Um, did I think you it's. Them? I think it's great. Jimmy, yeah, all of them are Jimmy. Yeah, it was Big Jimmy, Little Jimmy, and Normal Jimmy. And you were still able to like to like set them loose after going that attached to them from having named them. Oh, those guys! I became less and less attached the more I dealt with them. The best was, part uh, is is the one that leaves Sean's, the one that gets lost in Sean's apartment, randomly as he's playing Madden, decides he's gonna hop out, look him in the eye, and say, <laughs> "See you later." Yeah. And then Bolt, and I chased him into the bathroom. He escapes from the bathroom, chased him, finally cornered him behind a bookshelf and locked him up and brought him away the next day. So, it was all about cardio, bro. It's all about cardio. Yeah, it was a whole thing. So, yeah, other than rabbits, I guess uh, the Andrew Luck news is pretty big, too. Uh, Andrew who? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, that, that was devastating. Uh, yeah. Both what from a... Uh, fan perspective and from a fantasy football perspective i mean i get it good for him i mean he's if it's for his own mental health and his himself just like his own personal well-being good for him but no absolutely i mean there's no reason for it. he has no. enough money to last him the rest of his life there's no reason to put yourself on the line yeah like and the cool thing with the colts is they didn't take the extra 24 million from him they let him keep it did you, you know, see that I- yeah, most teams do that. The only yeah, reason it's a big deal right now is because uh, the Lions took it from Calvin Johnson. But they oh, did really? that to they did it to Barry Sanders too, didn't they? Uh, I don't remember with Barry. I was young, um, but they definitely did it with Calvin, yeah. and it was just like, <sighs> as a fan, like it was so frustrating because like it separated the entire fan base, where like yeah. half the people were on side like you shouldn't have re- like you retired you owe us this money back and half the people were like nah man like he put in his time and dues he earned the money so it was a it was a really frustrating situation i hate when teams do that yeah so also so, frustrating colts fans booing andrew Luck. yeah seriously um, like let's be honest those weren't colts fans those were losers yeah yeah I know. and there are people who every- go to football games to get drunk and every fan base has those, so I yeah. mean, like it's nothing specifically against the Colts. It's just like I don't know. Did you it, guys? It's frustrating. Did you guys see that uh, on Twitter? That former Colts player is with Jacksonville now. I can't think of his name. I want to say Overton. Is it Matt Overton? Maybe. Sorry. Uh, I'll know. look. I'll, I'll look it up. He offered for any Colts fan that was pissed about Luck retiring because they just bought season tickets mm-hmm. to buy their season tickets off of them, and he's going to donate them to like the Boys and Girls Club of Indianapolis so that like kids could go to the games instead of these entitled jerks. Nice. Wow. Yeah. That's that's pretty badass. Absolutely awesome. I'll, I'll, yeah. go, I'll find. I'll find his name. Yeah. No, that's super cool. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, and then I think he got his tire slashed afterwards. Whoa. Too. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that was confirmed or not, but like. Yeah, There's a report pretty, of it. That's pretty trashy. Oh. We should probably talk about fantasy football, though. And, you know, like, go ahead. Go ahead, Andrew. It is Matt Overton. He's a long snapper uh, currently with the Jaguars. Nice. Long snappers make enough money to buy that many season tickets? I, I, I mean, I'm sure if it comes down to it, somebody else is going to kick in. I mean, Andrew Luck might kick in himself because like, he he's, probably would. he's a good enough guy and he feels bad enough that he'd probably do it. But, um, yeah, he's a good dude. They'll probably yeah. crowdfund, it, crowdfund it if they have to. But realistically, the people that are complaining about it, they don't, they're actually going to turn their season tickets in. 
<laughs> right. You know what I mean? They're like, they're just, they just want to be vocally pissed off. And right. I was like, oh, I just bought my season ticket. Like, no, jerk, you're like, shut up. <laughs> you're, you're not selling your season tickets. You had season ticket holder money. when they sucked. Deal with you, it. You had enough money to buy season tickets. You probably aren't going to sell your season tickets just because luck retires. Right. Yep. Probably not. So, who does this hurt the most? T.Y. Hilton. Other than me and all of my fantasy teams. <laughs> I'm going to say any receiver outside of Hilton. That's exactly where I'm at, too. I think Hilton's still going to do okay with Brissett. Last time he had Brissett, he still performed. I mean, it was more hit or miss. It was like week to week with him, but he was still able to put up 100-yard games with Brissett. Yeah. I, I'm kind of curious where he ended that season at. Um, was it 16? Uh, I think it was 2016, yeah. No, maybe 17. But... Yeah, I think he, he ended up fine on the year. It was just you had weeks that he was just unstartable. So. It, it was it was 17. It was two years ago. Yeah. 966 yards and four touchdowns. Yeah, so I, it's definitely a hit, but it's not as big of a hit as I think it'll be for everybody else. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, like, I, I guess it depends on how you frame it, though, right? Like, because his ceiling was the highest, I think proportionally he's going to come down the most. But, mm-hmm. like, I, I do see what you're saying. Like, so Devin Funches now, instead of having, you know, 45 yards per game, he's going to have 25. You know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. not, that's like, yeah, no, you're right. Uh, he ended up as a high end wide receiver three that year. Um, so, yeah, like, that definitely hurts Hilton, but I think it makes all of their other receivers just and tight ends, everybody just irrelevant. Yeah, I mean, the, the other thing we got to take into consideration is the offensive line is a lot better this year. They have Frank Reich as a coach as opposed to Chuck Pagano. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, there's a lot of lot more things going for Brissett here than it was last time he came he also in. also has a couple more years under his belt, a couple yeah. years, like, under Andrew Locke. So, yeah, like, I get it. Um, I'm curious to see how this is going to affect T.Y. Hilton's ADP because it might get to the point where he drops so far that he becomes a bargain, um, especially in like dynasty leagues, mm-hmm. which is what we're talking about here. Just because if Brissett isn't good next year, they're going to be in the market for a quarterback, right? You know? So and then you have TY with the rookie quarterback, which is theoretically better than Brissett. Cause otherwise, why are you drafting him? If you don't think he's a better option True. than Brissett. So, True. um, that's something to consider. So I think if his ADP drops low enough, I'm definitely in on that. Um, Harris Campbell's having a really rough time. He's been banged up. And first of Injured. all, I, I was, yeah, I wasn't wasn't big on his tape in the first place. But then he got banged up, and then Andrew Luck retiring. Like the hits just kind of keep coming for him, and I don't know what to think about Paris Campbell at this point. Like. Is he still a first-round rookie pick at this point? Mm. Yeah, he has to. Yeah, be. I think, I think he alone. has to be. So, are we are we dropping him at all in the rankings, or is he staying basically right where he's at? I don't. I mean, in rookie rankings, I don't really see too many receivers who's still going to bypass him, even with a new quarterback. Yeah, I mean, I've always been a big Debo guy. Um, I think I had Debo ahead of him anyway. Or at least close to. Most people don't. So, um, I don't know. I think he's one that might be able to pass him up. He's been sitting kind of at the back end of round one. Um, let's see. I yeah, think that, if, if Tyree Kill is on the move, then I think Hardman makes the biggest jump of anybody. You'll see him go flying crazy. Yeah. And, I mean, he's already – he was already flying crazy for a good portion of the offseason. Just right. Just all the stuff that – um, that they had going on. So, I don't know, Hardman could definitely jump them. Mm-hmm. So, um, and Hardman may already have jumped them, depending on the leagues you're in. But, right. Yeah, so he's probably staying pretty close to where he's at, though. Yeah, I mean, long-term, I think he's still a good prospect. They'll, they'll yeah. get the situation figured out sooner than later because you're not going to sit there and keep trying to fail with a quarterback. Yeah, generally not. Um, Marcus Mariota is the only one, but... 
Andy Dalton. Andy. Ryan well, Tannehill. you know what? All right. Uh, Andy Dalton has had some productive years. And you got to give it to him. He had Marvin Lewis. Yeah. Marvin Lewis was his coach. Andy Dalton is just pure mediocre. He's an enigma. You're, you're not. You're <laughs> never going to win a Super Bowl with Andy Dalton. No. Like, it's just not going to happen. Whoa, and whoa, like, whoa, 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 whoa. Have you ever heard... Brad Johnson. Trent Dilfer. Are you, are you going to... I'm, 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 no, I'm letting I'm letting Joey fill, fill in the flags. Like name name quarterbacks worse than Andy Dalton that have won Grossman, Super Bowls. Rex, Rex Grossman got to a Super Bowl. It, yeah. Are we sure that Andy Dalton's better than Flacco though? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't say he's better than Flacco, but I don't think he's that much worse. I think no. he's better than Brad Johnson. I think he's better than Trent. Are you oh. sure? I think Dilfer? he's better than Trent. I think <laughs> All right, so the other aspect of this that we're kind of, like, overlooking is the effect it's going to have on all the running backs. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a running thing where, like, whenever some fantasy news breaks, someone says, how does this affect Marlon Mack? Um, Like, I think on SleeperBot, they have rules set up where if you ask that, you get a two-week ban from the chat. <laughs> that second offense, you're just banned from SleeperBot if you ask how any news affects Marlon Mack. So, uh, like, yeah, it's a funny thing, but, like, this is actually going to really affect Marlon Mack, I think. Oh, yeah. uh, like, they're going to be playing from behind a lot, um, and they're not going to be running the ball much. Boost up Nineteen Hines. I don't uh, know, like... It's definitely not Jordan Wilkins. He's the last <laughs> one here, but it it's tough to say which one of those two are going to be used in passing situations next year. And that's kind of like what we're waiting to see because realistically, like it doesn't matter who the starting like running back is for the first couple downs. It's whoever's catching the passes there. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I'm really interested to see how that pans out. Um, I'm guessing Marlon Mack is going to be catching the passes, but I'm pulling up right now just to see where everything ended up last year. Um, If Nine Hines is not catching the passes there, though, like he's worthless at this point, right? Right. He's not going to carry the ball. Yeah. And, because you're you're already going to be cutting down the number of carries significantly. You also have a running back that's better at what you need them to do. Right. So I just don't think that you're going to have him seeing the field at all. So. I mean, Hines last year had 81 targets for 425 yards. Uh, so it is Hines that's going to be yeah. the pass, theoretically. So it's Marlon Mack that's going to be hurt here. Then. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, think, yeah, I, I think it hurts Mac more and it bumps up Hines a little bit. Yeah, that's I, really interesting. So I'm looking, yeah, Marlon Mack only had 26 targets. So, um, yeah, this is a big sell on Marlon Mack and, uh, and probably a buy on Naeem Hines. But is, at the same time, I think if, if he drops far enough, like same deal with T.Y., I'm still going to take him later in the rounds. Like I'm not going to take him – third or fourth round if he drops to like the sixth i'll still take him i'm thinking that by the time the colts get it back together and get a productive offense that's actually viable for a running back that doesn't catch a whole lot of passes um they're probably going to have moved on to a different running back yeah i still think i still think we need to figure out if Brissett can do it I mean, like I said, he's got Frank Reich and he's got the offensive line. I mean, we should give the guy a chance before we completely write him off. He was, what, a third-round pick by New England? So, obviously, New England had faith in him to possibly back up Brady until Brady decided he wasn't going to retire for another seven years. And then Indianapolis obviously had enough faith in him because they traded for him once luck went down last time. So, I mean, he's... Yeah, teams he, trade for bad quarterbacks, though. Yeah, I know, but do you draft a bad quarterback in the third? Yes, you do. But it's Belichick. Belichick's a smart guy. He knows what he's looking for in his players. I just feel like giving him the offensive line now, the good coach, look what the coach did for Nick Foles. He got Nick Foles 20 grand a year. 20 grand a year, that's good money. (laughs) 
20 oh, million. sorry, twenty million. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jesus, I didn't realize I said it. It's good money for a quarterback these days. Yeah. I'm just saying before we write him off in the XFL. Before we write him off, I feel like, like Gardner. Yeah. I feel like before we write off for set, we need to give him a shot. What about okay, Jordan but... Wilkins? No, stop. Just stop. He, he was top five but... in the in the league last year in yards per carry. Not that that's the best metric, but it's a metric. <laughs> that's your argument. It's not the best metric, but it's a metric. Yeah. Okay. I'm if I have Jordan Wilkins anywhere, I'm just cutting him after this conversation. Just because um, I'll pick him up. No, so I, it might be interesting to go float some offers out there on Naeem Hines. Uh, Eric Ebron, this is going to absolutely kill. Yeah. Um, because his value is mostly red zone value. And mm-hmm. the thing was, was that Andrew Luck loves targeting his guys in the red zone. It's how mm-hmm. Jack Doyle performed so well the year before. So you're probably like, I don't know what Brissett does with his tight ends in the red zone, but realistically, it's not what Andrew Luck t- does with his tight end so right. you're gonna see a huge drop off there so this is sell for everybody but maybe a buy for naeem hines which is weird to say but yeah i don't know i'm kind of into it though because i don't think many other people are out there buying naeem hines all right so now if, if everybody's down on Brissett, what do you think about chad kelly is chad kelly somebody just go pick up possibly thinking that he might start no because I've seen it, so many leagues, people are all of a sudden just like rapid fire and picking up Chad Kelly. Oh, I know. He was, uh, people really liked him as a prospect. Until he became He's, an idiot. Get, well, he was always, he was an idiot before he went to the NFL. That's why he went undrafted. So, yeah. Uh, can, I mean, can we back up one second? Sure. Yeah. Uh, just back to your point about the tight ends. Jack Doyle led the team in, uh, receptions and was one behind the team lead in targets uh, with Jacoby Brissett in 2017. Uh, so it's just T.Y. Hilton and him? Yeah, the 109-108 for targets. Uh, Jack Doyle had uh, eight, 80 catches. Who was uh, oh. their, who was their other uh, wide receiver there at the time? Mon- Moncrief. Okay. He was third on the team oh. in targets, but he's down at 47. That's not really relevant. Uh, he only started 12 games that year. So yeah, they basically only threw to two people. Yep. Okay, interesting. So the question but, is then, is Paris Campbell going to be more of a threat than Moncrief? Like, is he going to see more than 50 targets? Probably. From now, what I've I'm heard, thinking Funches. 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 yeah. He's, the guy he's, so far. he's like the big guy that you can kind of throw towards and at least hope that the, his big body can win him some balls. Yeah, so then I guess what you're looking at there is just like a lot of people that are going to be, because like, yeah, that gives me a little more hope for tight end over there, but you also have better targets there than you had back then. So Basically what we're saying is avoid the Colts offense at their current ADP. Unless it's Naeem Hines. Right. So, yeah. Didn't didn't Uh, do a lot of targets under him. What was that? Running backs weren't getting a lot of targets under him, so I don't know if Hines is uh, a value unless it's just scheme, right? Frank Reich's scheme versus... Well, uh, it would definitely be partially Arizona. scheme, and it also would probably depend on who was running for them that year. Frank Gore, he, he can catch the ball. Yeah, he can, but it's he's not a pass-catching specialist. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, I don't know if there's anybody else we need to talk about on the Colts. What are you thinking? Yeah, I I think that's it. I think we covered it. I think that pretty much sums it up. So we're going to take a short little break, and we will be right back to talk some of the other news. We're back to talk some of the other uh, dynasty relevant news that happened this week. We got a good amount of it, actually. Um, not nearly as important as the Andrew Luck news, obviously, but uh, Lamar Miller going down was pretty big. Um, it's another one that I have in a lot of my leagues because he's just been a discount running back that just keeps producing every single year. Mm-hmm. So I've traded for him in a lot of places, and I'm just really bummed about that one. Yeah, that's pretty unfortunate. Luckily for them, they traded for Duke Johnson like a week before. Yeah. Do you, do you think? Do you think? It just occurred to me if they hadn't traded for Duke Johnson before, 
A, do you think they still trade for him or do they go for a bigger a bigger fish? And B, do you think they get him for the same price or do you think they, uh, the other team smell blood in the water and they just fleece him? I think you get him for the same price. Running backs are pretty um, pretty cheap and affordable. I'm honestly surprised they had to pay what they did to get him. Um, I'm a little surprised they didn't bring in Jay Ajayi. Uh, mm-hmm. Because that seems like a natural fit there with Duke Johnson, where you have the bigger power back, um, and then you still have Duke Johnson as a change of pace back. Um, I'm really interested to see where Duke John where Duke Johnson ends up fitting in this in this offense. Because I think everyone's kind of assuming right now that he's just going to become a workhorse, and I don't I don't think that's going to be the case. Like there really aren't workhorses in the NFL and anymore like they're not really a real thing everything's a committee and i think that people are really overestimating what duke johnson's role is going to be this is obviously like really good for his value um Mm -hmm. where he was worth nothing last year and suddenly he's in a very productive role but i don't know that he's going to be what everyone wants him to be do you think there's still a chance they bring in a big name i i saw some rumors of uh they're they're apparently shopping clowny And so I saw some rumors of like Clowney for Melvin Gordon, for example. That makes, that would make literally zero sense to me. At least on the Chargers side, they don't need Clowney. Also on the, on the Texan side, because you don't trade good pass rushers for running backs that you're going to have for two, three years. So like, I understand shopping Clowney, but you better get something better out of it than a running back. Um, and also th- then you're trading for Melvin Gordon and then you have to pay him and you don't right. really want to pay running backs either as every team in the NFL has showed us over the last couple of years. So, um, I think there's going to be another interesting running back behind Duke Johnson. I just don't know who it is. I want it to be Karan Higdon, but I don't know if that's going to work out. Uh, I think right now they have, a uh, Demaria Crockett. He's another oh. rookie. I'm yeah. so glad you said his name. I was waiting for you to say it. <laughs> I got it, right? I think you did. Oh, 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 oh. Close Look at this guy, huh? <laughs> and uh, there's somebody else, too. Howell, I think it is. Don't know. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Higdon is really the one that interests me because everybody else on that team has kind of over the years showed me that they're not going to be, like, a fantasy viable long-term running back, whereas Higdon, like – not a huge fan of his tape, but he's young. Maybe he surprises us. Uh, you know, every once in a while that'll happen. So um, generally in these situations, I like to favor the young guy just because they haven't ruined their chances yet. Buddy Howell currently listed number two on their depth chart on our lads. Then Josh <laughs> Ferguson, uh, Taiwan Jones, uh, all ahead of Demaria Crockett, Karan Higdon, and Cullen Gillespie. Gregory Howell Jr. Yeah, so none of Buddy that really, Howell. N- none of that really intrigues me. So no. I honestly, do, I I, th- I honestly do think they're gonna try to make Duke that workhorse back. I think they're gonna try. I mean, how many carries are you calling a workhorse? There, I mean, a workhorse 15. nowadays is what twelve to fifteen. That's considered like a workhorse to have twelve to fifteen carries. I mean, he's obviously gonna get targets too. Yeah, if it, if he gets 15 carries, I would be a game. I'd be very surprised. 15 a game um, is 240 on the season. Yeah, I'd be very, very surprised by that. He is the know. all-time leading rusher in Miami. What? Miami, the University of Miami is the all-time oh, leading rusher. Oh, I thought you meant the Dolphins. I was no, like, no, no, no. It's like, You're like, come, come on, not, I may be an idiot, but I'm not that much of an idiot. <laughs> I would never say I may be an idiot. So that one's uh, obviously a bit of a rough situation. I Duke Johnson was one of my guys, though, because he uh, basically was non-existent last year. But the year before, mm-hmm. he was like RB12 or something like that in PPR, which was just insane. Yeah. And he was going super late in drafts. So um, I got him everywhere. And not then last year, that obviously didn't pay off some hoping that the shares that I still have are worthwhile now. So He's no Larry uh, Sanka. Want to talk Darius Geis? Goose. The Goose? Goose. Yeah. So he's back. Yeah, he looked pretty good. 
Yeah, I mean, it wasn't anything spectacular, but uh, I don't know. I hope he's the same player he was before the injury because he was a good player before the injury, and I really liked him. Um, I think I have seven or eight shares of Geis, so that's uh, that's another one that I need mm-hmm. to pay off big time here. I mean, he, um, he looked that, he looked powerful when he was running. He looked like he had his, his drive is back, his speed was back. It's just going to take a little bit of shake off the rest. I think he had a long game called back due to a, due to a penalty. Yeah. My, my, mean, favorite, my favorite observation of that game was uh, leave it to the Redskins with all the controversy around their medical staff to bring a guy back from an ACL in his first game back, give him like 12 carries in the first half. <laughs> <laughs> the Redskins. Yeah, they, uh, they sure know how to, how to piss people off, I guess. But I, <laughs> Take care of their athletes. Yeah. Can, you, can you imagine if he went down with an injury on like carry thirteen? It'd be like, oh my god, this he organization did. is just ruining players. That I, I think like. the entire team would just leave. So what are we looking at for that backfield this year? You got Geist, you got Chris Thompson, you got Adrian Peterson, Adrian Peterson, and then and you still right kind of the future. Yep, and then you got you. You don't really think that he's their future, there, right? Oh, Bryce Love? Oh, Geist, yeah. Geist of the future. No, no, no. I'm just saying, like, because he's not going to play Oh, in this the future. Year. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and then you got Samaj P. Ryan hanging around. Just I, I couldn't believe that when I saw he was getting carries. He's still he's still on that team. Eh, it's just yeah. Ahsoka preseason time. Yeah, there's no way that Samaj P. Ryan has no. a meaningful role. They were, they were hoping he would blow up in the preseason and somebody would be running back needy and say, hey, we'll give it a shot with this guy. So what do you think? Do you think they cut him, or do you think that they uh, keep him and, and try to practice squad love? Uh, they'll just IR love. Is love hurt? Yeah, he's still recovering from last season. Oh right, 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 right. It was yeah, yeah. okay. So they'll probably stash him away on the IR. Um, that would be my best guess anyway. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a mess of a backfield. Uh, Adrian Peterson still hanging around. Mm-hmm. Um, he's kind of sneaky value right now, I think. Um, so I think everyone just assumes that they're just going to hand the reins to guys, but I think it'll be more of a committee over there. I agree. Um, I don't know what they're going to do with Chris Thompson. Cause he's obviously the receiving back there, but like they are really going to use like a straight three man rotation where they, where they, rotate Peterson and Geis on the early downs and then Thompson takes third downs. Like it just kind of seems like that'll just kill everyone's value. Yeah. And I think it will, but at the same time, I don't see this team really throwing the ball much at all. Like even playing from behind, I think their best option is to run the ball. <laughs> <laughs> what, what What's your projection? You said, you said Peterson's a, a sneaky value this year. What's your projection for his yardage total rushing yardage this season? I don't know, because um, I think that depends a lot. I think a lot of the value comes from guys coming back from injury and either A, them easing him into it in the beginning of the season, or B, him re-injuring himself, and then mm-hmm. Peterson basically being what he was last year. So I think with guys coming back, you don't take him a bit. Um, he had 1,000 yards last year. I think like it's possible to see like 800 yards and eight touchdowns or something, and the, like the benefit of that, though, is that it'll be – if he hits those marks, it'll probably be more condensed. Like those points will be condensed into fewer weeks because yeah. like if Geis goes down with injury, you know, like most of the production comes after that happens. So if, if he gets 800 yards, he, he pulls into fifth place all time career rushing yards. Uh, nice. I don't want to hear about that. I'm a Sanders fan. <laughs> Sanders through and through. I've, I've never really liked AP, and uh, I got to deal with these Vikings fans saying that he's a better running back than uh, than Barry Sanders ever uh, was. No, he'll still be behind Sanders, but uh, do you know Sanders is number three? Do you know who's number four? Uh, I do. I can't top of my head, though. No, it's, he's active player. It's Frank Gore. It's Frank Gore. Frank Gore, Gore. Ha- has a realistic chance of passing Barry Sanders this year. He's only about 500 yards behind. That's my boy. I, I'm okay with that. He's a I'm tank. Okay. Yeah. yeah he, he only played about seven more years than Sanders, so he's, <laughs> right. he's allowed to pass him. It doesn't, doesn't right. matter. Like, if anybody's earned it, it's Frank Gore. Well, uh, you want to talk Darwin Thompson? Yeah, I, I like uh, I like him. I mean, I'm, I've already gone on record saying that I'm a, I'm a believer in Damian Williams, but... Um, 
one of the big question marks around him is the fact that he's never carried the load for a season. So, you know, there's a possibility that he he doesn't hold up to it. So I like him a whole lot more than anybody else they've got. I think uh, yeah. I think I think Hyde is gone. I think he's getting cut, and uh, Daryl Daryl Williams I think is just a guy. So, um, in terms of dynasty value, I think uh, I think there's some value there with uh, with Thompson. So, I don't know if there's value there per se. Uh, I was in a couple of drafts where he went first round of rookie drafts, um, and it's like. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to pay that price. Yeah, um, since he leapfrogged Carlos Hyde, his hype kind of went through the roof. Yeah, like I, I have him in all of the startups and rookie drafts that I did early, um, like every single one. And then there was a turning point where suddenly I couldn't get him in the third round anymore because that's where I was getting him everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, or in like the last two or three rounds of startups. Uh, and then basically the hype started ramping up and it was like, yeah, I'm not getting him where he's going. So, so uh, just I don't want to I don't want to go too far off topic, but like that reminds me of Singletary. People people are now talking about t- taking Singletary as a top six pick. Like, is that is that not is that crazy? Like taking Thompson in the first, no. taking Singletary top six, is that crazy? So the thing is, is that running backs are just more valuable rookie picks than wide receivers like period Mm -hmm. so it elevates all these guys values um but so you're looking at a lot of guys that could be a part of the changing of the guard so um or at least are in a position where if somebody gets hurt they're in a good situation or they're behind somebody that gets hurt a lot so that whole group basically consists of singletary darwin thompson uh Ryquel Armstead, Alexander Madison, and Darrell Henderson. So all of those guys, uh, you have Henderson sitting behind Gurley, who obviously has the knee issue. You have Madison sitting behind uh, Delvin Cook, who hasn't been able to stay healthy. Armstead behind Fournette, who has the foot issue. Um, Singletary behind uh, McCoy, who is basically changing the guard there. He's not going to stick around Buffalo mm-hmm. for long. And, and Gore. And Gore, yeah. yeah. And, yeah, but again, Gore just goes to every team for one year just to suck up fantasy production and all that. Um, and then uh, that's why I'm kind of like, like, I like Darwin Thompson as a player, like a good bit. Um, I definitely I think I had him graded as a fifth round player when I was doing all my scouting and stuff. Um, might have been a little higher than that, but like he's definitely in the worst situation of them because he's behind a running back that hasn't shown those issues yet. Like, yeah, we may believe that he's the more talented running back, but man, like they were the Chiefs were starting. Um, was it Jamal Charles that they were starting going into the Kareem Hunt season? before he went down and then Spencer Ware was then going to start ahead of him and then Ware went down and that's what it took to get Kareem Hunt there. Like kind of just happened. Uh, I believe so. I know, yeah. but I know that I know that uh, it took an injury to get Kareem Hunt into the situation that he was in. Right. So uh, like, I see that as kind of a similar situation here where I think unless Damian Williams is absolute garbage this year, or he gets hurt. I think that they're probably going to run him and Darwin Thompson's kind of going to be like an afterthought that gets a couple of change of pace carries. Yeah. Um, And they did, they have said that they want to run it more as a uh, committee this year, but like traditionally that's never been the case with Andy Reid, regardless of who they have. So it would still kind of surprise me. Like this time of year is kind of when they do a lot of coach speak and stuff. Um, So yeah, I, I think I like those other running backs above Darwin Thompson right now, unless something changes. I'm a big fan of, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Quadri Olison? Allison. Allison, sorry. Yes. But, but uh, I mean, he's already shown better than Ito Smith all preseason. He led the team in rushing the first three games, had over 40 yards in every game. And he's just that bigger back. He's he's obviously like a change of pace for Devonta Freeman. It's not following Freeman up with another Freeman. Right. And I think the other thing is, is the team was definitely not sold on Ito Smith after right. last year. Like, there are rumblings of it all offseason, which yeah. is kind of a bummer because Ito Smith was one of my late-round flyers last year. Mm-hmm. Um, and it worked out okay, I guess. Like, that, that, 
it's, he's definitely worth now. He was usable. Or, well, he's worth more now than he was a year ago, I guess. Right. That's basically what looking at before Freeman got hurt. Um, so, yeah, Allison is definitely somebody that I have been targeting uh, late. And he was somebody that I was interested in before the draft. It was just kind of like when he went undrafted and had no draft capital in Basum, I was kind of bummed out about that. Mm-hmm. Um, but he definitely, like, he's a talented player. I liked his tape. So um, he's definitely one that's worth keeping an eye on. And definitely, like, if you own Ito Smith or Freeman, you should stash Allison. Yeah. So, uh, Joe, you got somebody else you want to talk about? Uh, I was looking into the Pittsburgh Steelers wide receiver situation. I mean, James Washington has shown to be more productive in preseason, but it looks like they're still going to run out week one with Moncrief as number two. Yeah, and honestly, I don't. I'm not really interested in either of them. I like Deontay Johnson over there, right? Um, and I know that he's definitely back in the pecking order right now. But you're getting them as a long term play because uh, I honestly don't think James Washington is that good of a receiver. I don't think Moncrief is that good of a receiver. Um, I think that one of them will probably produce this year just because of the void that Antonio Brown leaves. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the team is going to be committed to that player going forward. Um, and I think spending a draft pick on uh, Deontay Johnson, the third definitely supports that they're not sold on their group of wide receivers right now, mm-hmm. or at least, or at least not sold on having that type of wide receiver, which they want to have a role for. I can't find the numbers right now, but uh, you mentioned Washington produced uh, the most in preseason. uh, But from what I recall reading, he hasn't hasn't played a snap with Roethlisberger. Right, it's Uh, all been with Mason Rudolph. Yeah, so he hasn't got any first-team snaps. The other guys are getting the first-team snaps. I think think Johnson's gotten a few, but it's been mostly uh, Juju, obviously, and uh, Moncrief. So Which Mon- is bad for Moncrief because he hasn't really done anything in preseason. So if he's getting those first team snaps, he's still not getting the looks. Yeah, but but the the first team's offenses look pretty decent. Yeah, despite that. So as long as they're producing and he's not holding them back, right? Right, right, right. So yeah, I don't know. I like I Moncrief is like good value for this year. I think because I think most people kind of feel how I do that this isn't going to be a long term solution for Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Um, I just don't usually like having short-term stop gaps for a wide receiver just because I tend to go very wide receiver heavy in drafts early. So I don't usually end up in situations where I need those guys. Right. Um, so Moncrief, I think, is somebody that you're selling to a team that thinks they're competing this year as like a depth piece. Yep. I got so, that. Andrew, you got anybody to talk about? Uh, no, I'm, I'm actually out of, uh, out of ideas. Can can you hear my daughter uh, wailing uh, upstairs? <laughs> that, that may be a good time to take a break. Wrap it up. So uh, this <laughs> this has been uh, an episode of F three podcast uh, featuring Andrew's daughter. Um, <laughs> you, can, you can you can find our uh, written work over at uh, idpguys.org or over at dynastyfootballdigest.com. Uh, it's a dollar a month for a subscription. We do have free content over there, but uh, with a subscription, you get tools, rankings, combined offensive, defensive ADP. Uh, you get access to our Slack channel where basically all our writers can answer any questions you have, um, including three of us, and just kind of give our opinions, help you with your drafts, whatever you want. Uh, we're going to have live start sh- sit shows coming up uh, once the season starts. We have a brand new trade calculator that's up uh and that's pretty fantastic and uh, i believe we're working on a two qb trade calculator as Mm -hmm. well right now um and then you can find us on youtube at writer digest network and writer is spelled r-e-i-t-e-r so if you're listening to this on uh on your phone and you're trying to just see what it is that andrew's doing in the background uh then uh yeah you can find us there So uh, thanks a lot for uh, listening today, guys. Good show. Later. Later, guys.